me, if you and Uncle Petri don't get started soon, this dog will take off without you. Uncle Petri, we're ready. Hold your horses, boy. I'm here. Got these out of that old trunk in the attic. Mighty handy for nature study. Gee, they're keen, Uncle Petri. <laughs> May I carry them? Why, sure can. Hey, now you look like a real explorer. <laughs> You're pretty excited, aren't you, girl? Never knew a dog that loved to romp in the woods like Lassie does. How does she know we're taking her on the hike? Oh, that's easy for Lassie. Every time I take this old knapsack off that hook, it just means one thing to Lassie, a long hike in the woods. Well, you're mighty observing, aren't you, girl? What does observing mean? That she's smart? Yes, I guess you could say that. That's right. Lassie takes notice of little things and remembers them. Remembering little things can be mighty important sometimes. Why don't you change your mind and go with them? You'd enjoy it. No, one hand off the farm's all we can spare. I'll go another time. <laughs> sure you have enough to hold you over? Well, guess we could feed a small army at that. But there's only one thing worse than having too much. It's not having enough. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, dear, they're growing boys. Well, partner, let's go. Thought we'd take the pickup over to the edge of the Black Woods. Wouldn't want the boy all tuckered out before we even get there. We'll be home early now. We will, don't worry. Well, your Uncle Petrie knows a lot about wildlife, so you'll have a good hike. I know. Goodbye, dear. Have a good time. Bye, Mom. In you go. And up you go. Well, certainly one thing we're not going to have to worry about. What's that? We won't have to worry about you two starving. Pretty handsome sight, isn't it? You know, Timmy, someday those trees will make some fine furniture. Maybe some houses. Gosh! Will they cut down all those trees, Uncle Petrie? All of them? Shucks, snow. Spoils the look of the forest. Besides, it's not scientific. What's scientific? Well, it's, uh... Well, it's just being smart. Now, the smart way to log is... Take a few trees from over there and leave some standing. Then you take a few from over there and leave some standing. And so on and so forth. What good will that do? Well, the, the trees that are left standing will they'll drop their seeds and cones, so there'll always be new trees coming right along. I'm glad of that. Some places the Forest Service even plants whole new forests right in among the trees that are left standing. They sort of shelter the young plants. That way, there'll always be a forest to take a hike in. <laughs> well, Lassie's ready and waiting, so let's go. <laughs> ah, nothing like the smell of the woods after a good rain. Yeah, still pretty wet. That rain the other day really soaked in. Mighty pretty, isn't it? It sure is. But I wouldn't like to be in here alone. Of course, I wouldn't be scared if Lassie was with me. Well, now, there's nothing to be scared of, boy. The woods are a real friendly place, if you understand them. Just a lot of pretty scenery and a few friendly animals. You know something, Timmy? Those animals are a heap more scared of you than you are of them. I never thought of that. <laughs> Listen. What is it, Uncle Petrie? 
Grouse, hear it drumming? <laughs> Shh, Lassie. Come on, maybe we can spot him. Give me the binoculars, boy. Yeah, there he is. Here, take a look, right through there. Gee, what's he pounding on the log for? He's not pounding on anything. Just flapping his wings so fast, he makes that noise, like a vibration. What's he doing that for? <laughs> well, just trying to make some lady grouse think that he's about the most important thing in the whole woods. You mean he's just showing off? That's right, Timmy. Why, sometimes they puff out their chests and do a silly little dance, just to attract attention, like this. <laughs> Over by those bushes. Gosh. See how its spots sort of blend into the background? That's nature's way of protecting it till its legs get strong enough to run and it can take care of itself. Let's walk quietly so we won't scare it. Yeah. Walk on your tiptoes, Lassie. Ah, nice and dry. Reckon this'll do. Don't go too far, Lassie. There we are. See, Timmy? The Indians never had telephones or telegraphs or things like that, so they had to figure out some way of talking to each other from long distances, like using smoke signals. Do you know how to talk with smoke signals, Uncle Petrie? Sure do. Fact is, I know quite a few of them. Got a little snack here for Lassie when she's ready. She's just off having fun in her own way. Said it'd be a cinch. So it's taking us another day. Is it my fault? Hey, look. Where'd that buck come from? Search me, but I'm gonna get rid of it. Not so fast with that gun. It's only a dog. Sure, it's a dog. That means it's got an owner. Maybe not far off. One shot out of that gun would bring the law, but quick. I'll chase him away. Go on, get out of here. Go on. Go on, get out of here. This place is getting on my nerves. One more night in this jungle and I've had it. I'll quit your beefing. I'll go into town tomorrow and get the dough and then we'll get out of here. Always remember, Timmy, never leave an untidy camp. What do you know? Hand me those glasses, boy. What is it, Uncle Petrie? Well, if it's what I think it is, it's maples. Sugar maples. Here, take a look. Right across that clearing there. What are they good for, Uncle Petrie? Sugar. Maple sugar. Yes, sir, they sure look like it. Too late now. Well, I'll just have to come back tomorrow and check those trees. What is it, girl? Look, Uncle. 
Uncle Petrie. Uh-huh. Porcupine quills. All right, steady now, girl. Steady. Well, there we are. You should know better than a tangle with one of those prickly pigs, Lassie. Is your foot all right? No, oh, sure. Little quills like these don't do any harm. You better be more careful, Lassie. Yeah, I guess we better move on. Now, here's the woodcraft test for you, Timmy. Which way's home? I guess I just don't know. You sure don't. If I wasn't with you, how in the world would you ever get home? Oh, that's easy. I just say, Lassie, I'm lost. Take me home. That's good thinking, boy. Real good thinking. Show us the way, girl. Take us home. I'm telling you, that one stand of maples alone will run 15 gallons a season, and I got it all figured out. We can turn a corner of the barn into a sugar house, get the evaporator pan and some sap buckets. Now, wait a minute. How much is this going to cost? Why, we can build a pan ourselves, and buckets don't cost much. We can start in a small way, and as the money comes in, we can get bigger and better equipment. Mmm, maple sugar. I can taste it right now. They're getting fancy prices for raw syrup these days. I checked on it last night. Uncle Petrie, I'm afraid you're building this up for a big letdown. Oh, Paul's right. Maybe you are. Not me. I know sugar maples when I see them, and I know what can be done with them. Well, I'm busy over at the West 40, but if you wait a couple of days, I'll go with you. A couple of days? I can't wait five minutes. I was up for the birds this morning to get my chores done so as I can leave as soon as I finish my dinner. Well, <clears throat> I finished, and I'm off. It ain't exactly sugar in time, but I just got to get a little sap to run the test. So long. Bye. Bye. And good luck. Oh, my, I wish it wasn't a school day. Timmy would have loved to have gone with him. I wish you could have heard those two at breakfast. The way they were talking, you'd have thought they'd discovered a gold mine. Well, if this thing turns out as well as Uncle Petrie hopes it will, it might be just that, a gold mine. Oh, Paul, do you mm. really think so? Don't get excited. I just mean a little tiny gold mine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> doing in here? I, um, I'm, I'm looking at some trees. Looking at trees? For what? Let's see what kind they are. I'm, I'm going to get a little sap. Say, uh, you wouldn't be a little off your rocker, would you? Of course not. I told you, I'm here to inspect some trees. So, uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll be going. You're not going anywhere. Get over here. Sit down. Just so you don't get any ideas. I'd give 50 bucks for a hot cup of coffee right now. So one thing we didn't plan on, firewood that's soaking wet. Ah, I give up. You know, uh, 
You're going at that fire building all wrong. I suppose you can do better with this wet wood. Well, untie my hands. I'll show you if I can. I don't know. Okay. But don't try any funny business. I'll have this real handy. The secret's right there. See? Dry as a bone. Now first, get rid of this wet part. Now I'll make myself some fire sticks. Put my dry wood on top of that. Now we're going to have ourselves a fire. Say, that's mighty slick. I'll open up some cans. the black woods looking at those trees well if he's in the black woods he's in trouble trouble why right, what do you mean i saw some smoke coming up from over there it was like a signal it means he's hurt or lost or something my goodness what an imagination but mom yesterday uncle petrie told me all the ways that indians talk with smoke signals and that's what i saw Indian smoke signals. <laughs> what next? But, Mom, I saw them. Why don't you come outside and look? Oh, all right. Just wait till I finish this lettuce. But, Mom, won't you hurry? Yes, I'm coming. Hi, son. How did it go today? Oh, everything was fine at school. But I think something's wrong with Uncle Petrie. Yesterday, Uncle Petrie taught Timmy about Indian smoke signals. Now, Timmy says he saw smoke, and he's afraid that Uncle Petrie may be signaling for help. That's right, Dad. I saw two puffs, and that means trouble. <laughs> Sure enough. I told you. I told you so. Well, that's certainly not a natural way for smoke to rise. What do you suppose it means? I don't know. Well, let me get this straight, Timmy. You say that Uncle Petrie told you that the Indian signal for trouble is two puffs of smoke? Right. That means double for trouble. Well, it might mean something, Paul. We just can't ignore it. Uncle Petrie may have broken his ankle or hurt himself in some way. Well, you're right. We can't take any chances. It's going to be hard to locate where that smoke's coming from. Timmy, do you think you can find your way back to the place where you saw the maples? I don't know. Lassie could. She knows the way out, and she can find a way in. Of course she can. Come on, I'll go over there right away. All right, we'll all go. What do you think you're doing? You're trying to make this fire smoke. Well, I, I was just trying to help. Help who? 
Shall let the law know where we are? I don't let you have it. Lassie, take us to Uncle Petrie. Understand, girl? Uncle Petrie. What is it, girl? Is it Uncle Petrie? Oh, if it were Uncle Petrie, she wouldn't have barked. <laughs> I'm going to follow her. You two stay behind, but not too close. That you, Joe? Oh, that mud again. Beat it. Scram. Go on, get out of here. I gotta help Paul. Well, I guess that one won't bother us again for a while. Oh, boy, am I ever glad to see you. Lassie's got everything under control over there. Yeah, here. You better be on the safe side. I'll watch him. <laughs> Would you see if there's any rope in the car? Paul? Paul, here, come quickly. Hurry. Terrible ordeal. My name is Hanson, Robert Hanson, of the Capital City Farmers Bank. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Don't try. Who are these characters? Well, oh, I gave them a part-time job on my farm. I guess maybe this get-rich-quick scheme appealed to them more than an honest job. You've had a pretty rough time of it, Mr. Hanson. You better get to a doctor. Ruth, would you drive him into town and then call the sheriff? Uncle Petrie and I will stay here and guard these playboys. Uncle Petrie, I saw the smoke signals and remembered everything you told me. Good for you, Timmy. I'm mighty proud of you. Oh, I like the picture in the Calverton News best. I think it sort of flatters me. And not bad, but I look too serious. Is that the one that says quick thinking on the part of Petrie Martin? No, that's in the uh, Capital City Spectator. This one says, the entire Martin family joined forces and effected the rescue of a prominent capital city citizen, and so on and so forth. Here it is. Quick thinking by Petrie Martin and the alertness of a small boy foils kidnap plot. Mom, will you read that one about Lassie again, please? Lassie, their noble dog, subdued and captured the second gunman. Well, I'm mighty proud of each and every one of you, and I have a very smart little boy. I suppose you want to look at your picture again. Oh, Lassie, you'll be spoiled by all this publicity. I knew I forgot something. What's that? I never did find out about those maples. Uncle Petrie, the next time you go into the woods, you better take Lassie with you to keep you out of trouble. <laughs> I sure will. How about it, Lassie? <laughs> coming to. 
It says here they got over 50,000 men working the mines down there in the Congo. Oh, Lordy me. Why, back in the good old days out west, a man would take his burrow and maybe a partner, and that'd be the whole blamed outfit. 50,000 men. All of them experts. Experts to find the gold. Experts to dig it. Experts to build a road. And experts to haul the stuff away. What do they do before experts, Uncle Petrie? Why, in the good old days, a man had to be an all-around expert, or he'd die out there in the wilderness. He must have been awful smart in the good old days. Smart, I say. Wasn't a prospector worth his salt if he couldn't sniff out a vein of gold with his nose. Sniff it out like this? Of course, you have to have a nose for it. What if the gold is way down deep? Well, didn't matter to a good gold sniffer. Yes, sirree, Bob. You take a man digging for gold. There he was, off by himself, with no one to do his thinking for him. Had to do everything, even his own engineering. And some of them old mines are still standing to prove it. Hmm. Look what it says here. Every mine and smelter has a fully staffed hospital to tend the miners and their families. Oh. Why, what are they bragging about? In the good old days, a man took care of himself. Didn't you have any doctors in the good old days? Oh, sure we did. We didn't coddle ourselves. Supposing I was out mining and my partner busted an arm. Let's <laughs> say, I'd set it myself and have him back on the job before you could say Jack Robinson. And cook. Take a man out there in the open. Why, he could do more things with one pot over an open fire than a, than a woman in a, a fancy tea shop with, with a dozen cookbooks to help her give you the indigestion. Men were men in the good old days. You can take it from me. Okay, we'll take it from you. We'll take your audience, too. Huh? Oh. And he was going to stay up so late because it's Friday night. Well, I'll bet him down, Ruth. Only you'll have to fight me first. said, if these sacks don't hold all the gold, we'll come back and get some more. I know you'd rather cook your own lunches, but uh, this will give you more time for mining. Thanks, Mrs. Morton. Thanks, Mom. Now, where will you be? In the hills at the far end of the lake. All right. I'll be back before dark. Okay. Smell better. Why don't you smell down low? That's where the gold is. You try smelling down low. The miners could smell gold. That's what they did in the good old days. Do you smell it? I smell something. Let me have a try. Think it's gold? I don't know. If we only knew what gold smelled like. Well, we might as well dig here. Okay.
so expensive. Yeah. Maybe we better try someplace else. <laughs> I can't. Well, then I'll help you. Oh, my leg's broken. Maybe my back, too. Uh, might do more harm than good. Your folks around? No, sir. Just Boo uh, and I. We're mining gold. I'm sorry. We didn't mean to break your door. I broke a lot more of this plane than you could have done with an axe. Yes, sir. If you could slide that door under me. Uh, no, you couldn't pull me out. You mean like on a sled? Yeah. But it takes too much strength. I could get Lassie. Uncle Peachy showed me how to hitch her up. And then she could pull. Gee, you're wrong. Is he hurt awful bad? Uh-huh. Does he look terrible? Uh-huh. He said we could slide the door on him, then hit your flashy. Thanks, fellas. You live near here? Over by Calverton, sir. Oh. Gee, this is awful. Uh-huh. You must have 
have hit your head awful hard. Remember when I fell on the tree? My bump was nearly as big as his. Uh-huh. Your mom put cold water on it, too. Uh, makes it stop hurting. How's your back? Well, it isn't broken, but someone will have to go for help. I'll send Lassie. Hadn't you better go instead? Lassie can run faster. Well, you can trust her, all right. She brought us here, didn't she? The Martins will come flying as soon as they see her. And we'll be here to take care of you. Lassie, go get Mom and Dad. Hurry. Oh, and don't forget Uncle Petrie, too. See if I could sit up. Maybe your leg's okay, too. Oh, no, it's broken, that's for sure. I'm gonna need a doctor. If this is the good old days, you wouldn't need a doctor. <laughs> what would they do, shoot me? Oh, no. You do like Uncle Petrie. You would send it yourself. Aw, uh, that's for the doctors. Not in the good old days. Uncle Petrie'd know how to fix it as quick as you said Jack Robertson. I bet you he couldn't. I bet you. I'll bet you he could. And I'll bet you could, too. Me? You could try to put a splint on it. Well, okay. But what's a splint? Just a straight board or a piece of metal, say. About as long as my leg. Maybe you could find something in the plane. Try and find two. How long do you think Lassie will take? Not near as long as we would. Now what do we do, mister? Uh, just like I tell you. I'll pull it straight. So the ankle and the knee and align with my hip. Slow. Slow. I'll keep my toes straight up. Oh, easy. All right, now pull. Pull. Easy. Easy. Like this, mister? Now. Now set it down. Easy. Easy. Keep my toes straight up. Oh, we're going to have to rest a while. What happened to that? Dog of yours. Lassie, she's probably at the farm already. Tie those splints tight. That's good. That's it. How's that, mister? Uh. Do you think we did it? I don't know. Feel anything? What are your folks? Don't worry, mister. Please. They'll be here any minute now. I'll go look. See them coming? Not yet. They ought to be in sight by now. Stopped. Boomer. There's something inside my plane, behind the pilot seat. A kind of pistol with a big, fat barrel. A pistol? Yeah. 
And there's some other things that look like giant firecrackers. I'll get them for you. No sign of them yet, mister. Maybe they weren't home. Well, she'll find them anyway. This is called a very pistol. What's it good for? Well, during the war, a downed pilot was taught to use every means he could to get help. This is one of them. It's really a signal flare. We're not allowed to light signal fires. Yeah, the brush is awful dry. Well, this shoots straight up, and the flare will die before it hits. I wonder what's wrong with this thing. Glassie's on her way back. I know she is. Wait, Mr. Matthews, please. Just until I take another look. Me. I'll be all right. serving me, Ruth. Thumb's too all fired sore to help myself. Oh, whatever happened to you? Oh, you know that bent blade on the harrow? Oh, yes, we're old pals. Did he tell you about it? No. Yeah. Reckon was all that talk last night about man having to be an expert at everything. Funny, I didn't expect them back before dark. Anyways, I decided to fix the blame thing myself. There isn't a doctor could have done a better job on that thumb. They are in sight. She wants us to go with her. Something's happened. Oh, well, don't get alarmed. Now they were going to the hills at the far end of the lake. Thank you. 
can smell smoke. There must be a fire somewhere. There it is. Hurry, Paul. I know it's Timmy. Somebody better get here soon. Maybe you ought to run for help. Maybe you ought to. Okay, we'll fight her together. If I'd listened to your son, there wouldn't have been any fire. But then I didn't have his faith in Lassie. Right handsome splint you got there, mister. Better job than I did on this thumb of mine. Well, there are the doctors that set my leg and splintered it up. Them? After all, they're combined age of 17 going on 18. Well, how do you like that? Well, very much indeed. Of course, it took longer than you could say Jack Robertson. Yeah. Huh? And Mr. Matthews told us exactly what to do. I'd still be trapped in that plane if it weren't for them. And Lassie. <laughs> well, I think we'd better get you back into Calverton. I'll ride back here with Mr. Matthews. You've earned a ride, too, young lady. <laughs> I'm mighty proud of the way you boys handle things. I just did like Uncle Petrie said. Are these the good old days, Uncle Petrie? Uh, better in the good old days, Timmy boy. Yep, much better in the old ones. other kids pay a nickel to watch Lassie do some of her tricks. No. Lassie's no show off. Please. 
because he never gets flames. Then it's ticks. Mike's full of them this time of year. Lassie's never acted like this before. It must be something worse. Let's find out. I'll start up here, and you start down there. And we'll meet in the middle. Not so fast. You'll miss it. I found something. I knew Lassie wasn't showing off. She was in trouble. It's a ladybug. Ladybugs are lucky bugs. Maybe we're going to be lucky. Ladybug, ladybug, fly away home. Your house is on fire and your children are gone. All except one. Can't wish out loud if we want our wish to come true. And we gotta make a wish before it flies away if we want to be lucky. Wonder why it doesn't fly away. Hey, maybe it's dead. No, it's not dead. It's moving. There's a bunch here. I bet Lassie will be glad I'm getting them all. Three, four, five, six. Gee, there's about 12 here. Eight, nine, ten. Nobody will step on him. Do you think we're both wishing the same thing? Well, if you're wishing we're going to be partners, uh-oh. I just can't get it. Need any help, Ruth? No, thanks. I'll be through in a jiffy. Good. Well, it sure looks like somebody needs some help. I'm all mixed up. I knew the adding ones. But I can't get this takeaway one. Will you help me, Uncle Petrie? Well, now, uh... If you was to ask me how to trap a wild bear, I could tell you, but, uh... Maybe you better ask your ma. She's the one that does the figuring around here. All right. Which is the one that's giving you trouble? Well, now, let me see. I just might learn something myself. <laughs> uh, Say anything in there about... How to get rid of those aphid pests on our apple trees? The usual suggestions. John Garrett says we're in for a real siege. Worst this county's seen in 50 years. And what's he doing about it? And he won't say. When it comes to giving out useful information, <laughs> John's close as a clam. Well, I know what I'm going to do to save our apple trees. There, now. That wasn't so hard, was it? <laughs> I know how to do it now. Gee, you're smart, Mom. <laughs> well, thank you. Being a scientific farmer, I reckon you'll hire one of those newfangled crop dusting contraptions, huh? Uh, you reckon wrong. They're too expensive. I'm using ladybugs. Well, I'll be all darn. You know something? Ladybugs is what I would have used. <laughs> Gee, Dad, how can ladybugs save your apple trees? By eating up the aphids that are eating up the apple trees. 
Ladybugs live on aphids. They'd rather eat aphids and uh, then ice cream and cake. They would? Save your crops nature's way. Use ladybug pest control on aphids. Write today for your order, $10 a gallon prepaid Bill Newton, Constant, California. You mean people sell ladybugs? They certainly do. They make a mighty good living at it, too. $10 a gallon for a bunch of little old ladybugs? Hear that, Lassie? <laughs> well, considering how many ladybugs there are to a gallon. How many? Let me see. Duh. 7,500 to a quart. Shouldn't Timmy figure that out, counting it as part of his homework? We haven't come to quarts and gallons yet. Well, uh, since you're the mathematician of the family, Ruth, how many? Well, um, well there are four quarts in a gallon, and uh, four times 7,500 is uh, 30,000. And that should be more than enough to protect our apple orchard. 30,000? How many ladybugs would it take to save one apple tree, Dad? Well, if they're all lady ladybugs, which are larger than gentleman ladybugs, and they all lay eggs, and the eggs all hatch, about a dozen, I'd say. Yes, with all those babies, 12 would do it. Well, don't count your ladybugs before they're hatched. It's Timmy's bedtime. Come on off to bed with you now. Good night. You too, Lassie. Night, Dad. Night, Uncle Petrie. Good night, boy. Good night, dear. Good night, son. Night, everybody. 30,000 ladybugs in a gallon. Gee whiz. God bless Mom, Dad, and Uncle Petrie, and Lassie, and all the ladybugs. And keep them safe so they can save Dad's apple trees. Amen. Suppose they'd wake up like all the other animals? What's the matter, Lassie? They can't hurt you as long as they're on the bench. big to me. Can you tell if they're lady, ladybugs? Dad says they're the biggest. Take a look, Lassie. What's he doing up so early? What's he doing up so early? Ladybugs. Where'd you find them? Well, I didn't exactly. Lassie sort of picked them up. That boomer and I could find more in the woods. And if we found a gallon of them, you could pay us $10 instead of sending it to those folks in California. We want to go into the business. Breakfast at 
ready. And school won't keep. What's the mysterious confab about? Timmy wants to go into the ladybug business. Oh, well, that's quite an undertaking. You betcha. You gotta know when and where and how. That is, unless you can find them while they're still hibernating. Hiber... What's hibernating? Oh, hibernating means sleeping through the winter, like bears do. Only difference is ladybugs sleep together. Thousands of them in one spot. That's what these ladybugs are doing. That's why they were so quiet and didn't fly away, isn't it? Oh, I understand it takes several weeks of warm weather to thaw them out and make them active enough to fly again. Isn't that so, Paul? Boomer and I better get started right after school. Well, it wouldn't harm none to let him try, Paul. It's been a cool spring, and there's bound to be thousands of ladybugs still hibernating under rocks and leaves and hollow tree stumps hereabouts. Well, who'll uh, clean them off the leaves? Takes a lot of patience, Timmy. Well, I'm willing to volunteer. Please, please let us, Dad. You never give up, do you? All right, since you're so determined. Good. Well, now that's settled. Would you three gentlemen please do me the honor of joining me at breakfast? And even businessmen don't go to school in their bathrobes. I'll get just real fast, Mom. Got to set a deadline, though. You've got to deliver the goods by Monday. Otherwise, I've got to send my order to those folks in California. No, you won't, Dad. <laughs> I wish it was afternoon already, so Boomer and I could start our business. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, Timmy. Bye, boy. Bye. Well, work to be done. More coffee? Mm -hmm. You don't really expect him to come back with 30,000 ladybugs now, do you? Confidentially, whether they find the ladybugs or not doesn't matter. What's gratifying is Timmy's reason for wanting to do it. Well, that's what puzzles me. Why is he so anxious? Because he's beginning to grow up. He wants to go into business for himself. What do you think of your independent son? Well, I'm very proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, that hurts. Why does it have to be so tight? Well, so they won't tickle you to pieces when you start scooping them into these bags. How will we know when we have a gallon? Oh, no need to worry about that. If you find them, just keep on scooping and your fortune's made. We almost forgot to tie up Lassie. Huh. Dogs don't like to be bound up, do they, Lassie? <laughs> well, there you are. Good luck and good hunting. It's up to you, Lassie, to help us start our business. <laughs> <laughs> around here, because Uncle Petrie said they sleep under rocks and stumps. And there are no rocks or stumps around here. She's the best tracking dog in the world. She is. Then why is she tracking in circles? I don't know. Looks like she doesn't want to find the ladybugs for us. <laughs> well, if Lassie doesn't want to find those ladybugs, she must have a good reason. But I still think she's the smartest dog in the world. She went in that 
direction, didn't she? Well then, since people should be smarter than dogs, and we're people, why shouldn't we go back where we started? You mean, since Lassie's so smart, she was leading us away from the ladybugs? Sure she was. Come on, Lassie. <laughs> So, didn't I? stump where they got the ladybugs was on my side of the property line. No, no, no. No sense getting all riled up, Navy Garrett. They're telling me did the fence zig or did it zag or who should have mended it. Being strictly a backwoodsman, I never did get the straight of thine or mine or who's right away. So I'm just going to keep on cleaning these pretty little bugs for who's ever orchard. So Paul tells me where to put them. I'm telling you. Those bugs belong in my orchard. You thought you could get away with it just because that stump where I put them stands in property that we're disputing. Now, look here, John. What's this all about? Now, let's start from the beginning. Well, whether you did or whether you didn't, it's the same difference. Would I have spent all that money shipping ladybugs from California just so I could start next year's breeding badge for you? No, I don't think you would. You thought you'd get away with it. Just because that stump where I put them stands on property, we're disputing. Gosh, Lassie, I didn't know that was Mr. Garrett's field. I can't let Dad take the blame for something I did, can I? If Dad gives back those ladybugs, Dad's apple trees won't be saved. You really want to help, don't you? Even if I didn't know they belonged to Mr. Garrett, we still have to replace those ladybugs, don't we, Lassie? You're not going to back out on me again, are you? This is your last chance. Are you coming with me, or do I have to go alone? Threatening you like that, going off in a huff. Stubborn, ornery old fool. Yeah, but the joke's on him. John doesn't know that ladybugs like to try out their wings first before settling down to eat. So if he'd put them in his apple trees tomorrow, as he said he was going to do, most of them would have flown away. Maybe to our orchard, maybe elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Timmy did him a favor by bringing the ladybugs over here. Only John didn't give me a chance to tell him. I better check the irrigation. Where's Timmy? I don't know. The lassie came through here a few minutes ago. Yeah, probably on some secret service mission. Timmy's got cooked up.
Apple trees are saved. And so, when I took all those ladybugs to John Garrett, and he saw he had more than he'd bought in the beginning. <laughs> What'd he say? He said next year he's gonna buy all his ladybugs from Timmy. <laughs> We're not in the ladybug business anymore. <laughs> 